Well, it's Pentecost Sunday. Happens every year. And that's done for the last 2,000 years. Now, earlier on, well read to us by Sophie, with which every person that reads the Bible, when they come across the word they're not sure, really want to just go work it out for yourself. And so I like that, so that was brilliant. Um, I remember learning a good lesson when I first got training. They said, if you don't know the word, <laughs> just sort of go, make it sound good, or just do whatever you want to do, and people will go, oh, he knows what he's talking about. Nearly nine years on, you know that's not true. But, we've heard Acts 2, and I, I want us to just imagine that for a moment. We know that in Acts 1, 8, it says that the, uh, Jesus would promise that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will, and the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you'll be able to preach the word across the whole of the world to the ends of the world, yes? And so there was the 120 disciples waiting in a room for the power to come upon them. I would like you just for a moment just to imagine what that must be like. You're spending time together. You're with a group of friends you spent a number of years together with now. It's 120 of you, it wasn't just the 12, 120 people. Can you just get your head around that for a minute? Oh, feels like a church congregation. 120 people. And they're all together, they're eating, they're chatting, they're praying, they're worshipping, they're waiting for the Lord. And then the sound, like a mighty wind, comes into the room. Good morning! morning. Can you imagine that? How does that make you feel right now? That's an offer just to shout out things. How does that feel? That imagination of that? Hmm? Goosebumps. Excited. They were waiting eagerly for the Lord. They were waiting for something that the Lord has promised to them. They're actually waiting eagerly for it, all 120. Isn't that something? And I'm sure amongst that 120, there were a few doubters. Yeah? Yeah, this ain't going to happen. We've been here long enough now. What's going on? There's others that were still anticipating. No, the Lord has promised this. We have seen him rise up. We know this is going to happen. They're waiting eagerly. Could you get your heads around there? Waiting eagerly for this promise of the Holy Spirit, this promise of this gift, this promise of the power that's going to empower them to preach the good news of Jesus to their friends, their family, their enemies. That's what the promises are in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then it comes like a mighty wind. And tongues of fire rest upon them. Wow. Excited? Could you imagine that happening right now in this church building? Yes. Yes. Let me try and explain something. Um, some of us were at the Flaming Fun Day yesterday, yes? yes? Okay. And for some of us, it was a 12 hour day. Good. So, could you sit here eagerly waiting for the promise from the Lord this morning? What does that make you feel, that eager anticipation? Could you imagine that happening here in Greenford Baptist Church? Don't just get me wrong. I hear the words, but I'm not seeing 
the reality behind it. Does that make sense? Because actually, if you were doing that, the disciples didn't know what to expect. No, no. They but they were waiting for something. <coughs> and it's, to me, it's the eager anticipation. Do we wait and with eager anticipation on what our Lord wants to do with us today? Whatever it is, it's like a present, isn't it? You wait for a present with eager anticipation, don't you? Who does? Steve, on your birthday, you're going to get one. Present. Yeah. According to Wendy, you are. Are you, are you waiting eagerly for that on Thursday? When you get there, you will do, won't you? But you don't know what it is, though, do you? Right, okay, great. Barbara, do you think you're going to get a present? Probably. <laughs> See, and there we have. Sorry, probably part of us as a congregation. Don't take this wrong way. That was great. Thank you. I'm glad you said that, Barbara. Because I think that's what we're like as church. Probably. Probably. And when we have our Lord saying, yes, definitely, just wait, be open, and it's going to come, we go, probably. And then we're not surprised when it doesn't come. I'm just curious about that. I, I hadn't, you know, when I sat there and I thought, well, disciples, yeah, they didn't know what was coming. All they know was they had been promised this gift. Now, the 12 could have turned around and said, well, look, we cast out demons and did all that when Jesus was kicking around. Yeah, we healed people. So it's probably going to be some of that. But they didn't know how it was going to come. It's like having an Amazon delivery. You pay for Prime, but depending on which courier they use... You don't know how it's going to come or when, says he, who was waiting desperately for two gazebos to come into this church building this week, ready for the fun day, ordered it, and it's meant to come the next day. The inside of my office, I can assure you, really gets boring after a while, when normally by now you're thinking it should be here, and you're looking at the tracking system, Arriving today, I just want you to go across just that extra centimetre on the tracking system to say arrived. So the next day, it came. The day after, it was meant to be there. Me and Amazon are going to be having words. I don't care it's going on the internet. But it's like that, isn't it? Sometimes you think it should happen today. And God's going, it's coming just Wait in eager anticipation. And we have to be willing to wait for it. And be open to it when it comes. And it probably won't come in the way we expect. But it will come. And we shouldn't be probably... It's like, Barbara, I'm not having to go at you, that's fine. I pray you get your present. But we should be like, Steve, yes, it's definitely coming. Because the person he trusts the most has promised to him it will be there. Right, Wendy? See? It's like that. And I wonder here if we... Yeah, God's promised so much. And I think the reason part of it's not always operated on or used is because we're in the probable states. I'm talking to myself just as much. This is not Warren nagging everybody else in the room. Just as much. Sometimes sit there with a probably. God's going, really? Probably? If I said it's here, if I've said you've got all this gift, all this power, all of this has come via me, via the Spirit, into you as individuals and to you as a church, then it's true. And no matter what anybody else says, it's true. And I will go, probably. And God's going, no, it's true. Amen? Okay, I want to look at something else. I want to come out, if you, it's okay with you, out of Acts 2. And I will look at another place where God was at work through a vision, but trying to show something that is a truth about our God. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 37 
We all know it. Valley of dry bones. Let's look at this. I just want to look at Ezekiel. Now, just for a minute, the first half of Ezekiel, Ezekiel basically just prophesying against Israel, saying it's all over for you. It's all done and dusted. Uh, you know, God's judgment is upon you. It's all over. You're going to be exiled. All hope is gone. That's a quick summary. Second half of Ezekiel is then Ezekiel actually saying, oh, but the Lord is going to restore it all. Let's just look at that. So just get our imaginations around this. The Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Just stop there for a minute. Again, let's try and imagine that for a moment in a vision gone to a valley, and it's a valley where a battle has occurred. And what there is now left there is the fallen members of the army. It's an aftermath of a battlefield where the unburied have rotted, the flesh has been eaten away, and the bones are bare, dry from exposed burning heat of the day and the subsequent days that have followed. Not a particularly pleasant picture, is it? It's a place where a battle has been lost. All hope has gone. Sorry, do apologise. Excuse me just for a moment. Rule, don't boast to people this week that you don't seem to be suffering from hay fever. You seem to have got away with it this year, so I thought. It's an image for Israel that all hope as a nation has gone. God has abandoned them. They have lost. It is all dried out. Fear will have taken grip. Everything is gone. Feels a little bit like our nation today, doesn't it? Fear is slowly but surely <coughs> gripping our nation. The fear of uncertainty, danger, is slowly gripping our nation. You'd be looking at those dry bones yourself. What would you be thinking if you looked at a battle and saw your army completely destroyed and nothing left? And then God asks Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Now, let's be honest. What would your answer be? No way. Yeah? Is that generally the answer? We know what the right answer is, because, you know, we know the right Jesus answer. But if we're looking, we'll go, no, all gone. Yeah? They can never come alive again. I liked Ezekiel's response. I felt it was very politically well-driven. Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied. You alone know the answer to that. I felt that was a good political answer. <laughs> From a human point of view, the obvious answer would be no. But it's up to you, Lord, saying Ezekiel. It's up to you. Then God says, he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign law says. Look, 
I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. If you're in a place of no hope, to hear those words must, oh, yeah? I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. I just get that. <gasps> Sorry, I just want to get that imagination. Could you imagine that? Um, everybody remember the 1970s stroke, I think the 70s movie, Jason and the Argonauts. Okay, you with me, all right? Now there's a moment, isn't there? They, they cast up some skeletons up from the, the ground. The sound effects, Terrible. All right, but let's give them grace for the... Could you do that impression again for us? Okay, so that's it, all right? And that's what it felt like. They're putting the bones back together. It's... And he gets his swords out, and they, they sort of rattle, rattle along like that. You did a brilliant. That's fantastic. After you, you're never going to sound good. So you've got that going on. So imagine this entire valley of dry, dead bones suddenly coming together in this vision. And the noise, the cacophony of noise must have been overwhelming for Ezekiel. Just like the blowing of the wind for the 120 in that room. Wow. I, sorry, I, I would get excited. Wouldn't you get excited seeing that happen? God's with you. Why would you be petrified if God is with you? The person that we, hang on, the person that we sit there and say, oh Lord, I know that you love me and we love you and I exalt thee and we exalt you, yeah? You are my Abba Father in heaven and all the various other worship songs we use, yes? Yet there is God standing with you, Abba Daddy going, check this out. And the best thing is he's used you to prophesy to make it happen. Whoa, come on. That's where we should be at now. Just think for that for a moment. Why would you run away? Yeah, I'd be, but I wouldn't run away. I'd probably be too rooted with fear going, what's just happened? <laughs> Barry, I love the honesty, man. But you just see that, and then you see the flesh forming. <gasps> now, anybody seen the movie The Fifth Element? So I don't know why, this is all coming to my head now. I'm, okay? And you know the bit where they. they if anybody. Fifth Element? They're reconstructing the Fifth Element. The woman, it's uh, Miller, uh, the actor, I can't remember, never pronounce her name. But the reconstruction, you know, he's seeing all the flesh and all that come on. Wow, imagine your Ezekiel starting to see the muscles growing. It's all pumping up. And the flesh forming. Wow. And you've been used to make that happen by God. No, it's God didn't say, I'll just do it. He says, prophesy that I, God, am going to do it. If Ezekiel kept his gob shut in that vision... If Ezekiel didn't open his mouth, it wouldn't have happened. I come back to what I said two weeks ago. God, we have given, been given the God-given ability to bring about God's presence and God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Unfortunately, we've also been given the God-given ability not to if we keep our mouths shut. Wow, Ezekiel, man, that's phenomenal. But now he's got all these fantastically well-constructed, fantastically excellent physiqued bodies like mine laying around on, a, on the valley. Then as I watched, muscle and flesh formed over the bones, the skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. The word had happened, 
It's almost like a partial revival. The word of God had happened, but in fact they were still dead. Then God said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Before we go any further, I want you to understand the word winds here, the Hebrew and stroke, um, the Greek version as well, actually the same word can be used meaning spirit. It's used interchangeably, it's the same word and it, it, the English doesn't do it enough justice. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. Again, breath, it's the same word, spirit. That they may live again. So I spoke the message and has he commanded me and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet. A great army. So imagine that now. Barry's returned, by the way, from his fear. Because <laughs> the angel Gabriel grabbed him. And there, all of a sudden, they are all standing up as one, standing in line as an army. And that's again because Ezekiel prophesied it at God's command. God did it all, but nonetheless, he still used a human being, just like you and me, to make it happen. Now, the twofold thing here is, is that God spoke his word, and his word was spoken, but not everything came about. It also needed God's spirit to complete it. And that's like us. We can rattle on talking to people about God, but if the Spirit's not in it, they're not going to come alive. It's interesting, isn't it? It's like Steve's testimony about what happened this week for him. 45 minutes of they were talking about God, but it needed God's spirit to make it come alive. So that, that guy who then turned around and said, Jeff, funny enough, I've had God start coming into my life. Suddenly I'm starting to discover things about God happening into my life. That's God's spirit at work, working in him. Yesterday, this fun day, there was what on the surface just looked like, just a good social time, wasn't God's activity and spirit was at work. <laughs> I overheard one comment being made by uh, some of the, our guests, you know, that had come along. Somebody said, why are they doing this? Now, we had leaflets explaining why we were doing this. And so um, one of the other guests, who doesn't go to church, got nothing to do with church, she went, well, they're doing this because it's the church's birthday. But these, these two churches, and they, it's something to do with wanting God here and stuff like this. And I just heard it. I just walked away. I thought, we didn't have to do anything at that moment. Didn't need any Christian to go up, oh, let me love you about Jesus. Because God's spirit was already at work. But we, his church, needed to be there, present, on the day. God's spirit, for Ezekiel's vision made them alive and made them become an army. God's spirit in Acts chapter 2 made them become alive and a church. I mean, we know the rest of the story. Scaredy cat Peter, who ran away when a little slave girl happened to say, you're Jesus' friend, aren't you? Blust the guts himself, run away like a scaredy cat, no, 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 is emboldened to preach the word and 3,000 are saved that day. 
to preach the word of Jesus to his own fellow Jews who could have called for his stoning there and then on the spot. That's what the Spirit of God does when we allow it. When we wait eagerly upon him to work on us and through us. Amen? Amen. Excited now? Yes. <clears throat> Some of us can feel like, we might feel like today, those dry bones. Feel dry, parched, almost dead. <coughs> the heat of many years of battle has finally dried us out. And we might be faithful readers of the Word of God but somehow the Spirit's not re-energising us anymore. It could be that we're just going through the motions and not really eagerly awaiting the promise of God. We're living under the probably... So two weeks ago, God is actually doing a new thing right now. I think yesterday showed a very small glimmer of that new thing that God is doing right now. Through us, his church. God is the same yesterday, today and but he actually doesn't always do everything the same way or in the same structure. We can see that in the Bible, that's clearly evident. But his promises, especially his promise of the Holy Spirit to empower us, remains the same. Amen? And that promise is held out to you today, to all of us today. If we eagerly accept it, if we eagerly wait for it, if we say, yes, I believe it's true, give it to me, Lord. Oh, ever actually, yeah, just, ever actually just gone, just give it to me, Lord, no matter what it looks like. I think we sometimes treat uh, the power of God and his promises almost like somebody holding a custard pie in front of our face. One level, oh, go on, it'll be fun. On another level, you're going, no, 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 don't give that to me now. Do you know the mess it's going to make on my clothing and my face? I've just done this makeup. Did you see what I mean? We don't like the idea of God coming up and messing up our lives a little bit and mucking it about with it. We like the safe God. God isn't safe. He's good, but he isn't safe. Where did that come from? Oh, C.S. Lewis, yes. <coughs> Do you want it today? Yes. Do you really want it? Yes. No matter how messy it's going to look? Yes. No matter how much your life is going to be messed up? Yes. There's a few yeses. Yes. Notice the yeses are getting less and less and less. <laughs> Barry saying nothing. But I really believe that God wants to go, here you go, my church, here you go, my children, fadumph. 
and then use it out there. And that's probably the bit we don't like, is, oh, it's not for our own little minor holy huddle. But God wants to go, come on. And in this time of terror and fear that is increasing, we're the ones with the message of hope. I'm going to ask the musicians and singers to return. I want us to um, just play something, whatever song you can, Steve. Just for a moment, I want you to reflect and sit with God just for a minute, eagerly waiting and saying to him what you've heard today. Some of us this morning, we could actually be saying, yeah, I'm dry, just give it to me, Lord. So just reflect on that. feel dry going into your workplaces and into your homes and into your colleges and wherever you feel dry you feel like hope has gone in these places and God is saying no it hasn't prophesy into them speak my word speak my spirit into those places We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.